Good evening. I am Vimala Sena Gamage, uh, past president of IESL, former director of irrigation. Uh, I passed out from the University of Ceylon and presently retired and working as educator as well as the arbitrator. So actually IESL interested me to give some very small brief about the international affairs for engineers. So today I am going to discuss and share some thoughts with you about the international affairs for, for the engineers. So actually it is international affairs is very wide subject, extremely difficult to cover within two years, two, two hours, but uh, I will just share with some important ideas which is relevant to the engineers. So engineering and foreign policy, I first, first slide I won't discuss. Historically, many engineers advances have participated major changes in interaction between the nations and have influenced the conduct and direction of foreign policy. So foreign policy mainly changed by the engineers. It is the mandatory <coughs> acceptance uh, in the general public. The opening of the Suez, Suez and Panama canals had significant geopolitical impacts. So I think you may understand that opening of the Suez and Panama Canal, which which actually brought to the what to call this connection of their countries. So that is the significant and marvelous product of the engineers. The Berlin to Baghdad railroad influenced the strategies of the allies of the World War One. World War One and the Trans-Siberian Railroad enhanced the presence and power Russia in Asia. So those are the pro 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 constructed and product of the engineering engineers. Technologies for extracting and using the oil using oil have affected political balances throughout the world, starting with decision of the British at majority before World War War World War One to which from coal to oil which radically changed relation with the Middle East. You know these engineers are actually pioneers. They actually extracting the oil from the ground and which changed the, our power system energy from coal to oil and it was gain some important development in Middle East and with that in the world. So those are the actually engineers are working for the develop the foreign affairs. Right? So then again the we will think about our day to day life. Information technology and the internet have weakened the ability of the central government to maintain control of the flow of information across the borders. So in, 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 uh, information technology as well as internet have weakened the ability of central government to maintain control of the flow of information across the boundaries. So because of the inter internet as well as information technology very quickly we can get the, what is happening in the other countries and in the world. The telecommunication have changed diplomacy, making it possible for government to home to direct action of diplomat in distant countries in real time who until then by necessity had acted much more autonomously. So now this normally in the past that ambassadors are working for the country and now because of the telecommunication and internet and other communication facilities actually any country can contact their representative in the other countries and, and then very quick communication and quick instruction everything which can be given to the diplomats so that is the di diplomacy have the real changes because of the engineers with instance communication government no longer have time to deal with 
crisis before the media and arouse public awareness. So you understand that because of this everything will be transmitted very quickly. Sputnik and subsequent development in space challenge the concept of national sovereignty in space. So this national sovereignty was actually challenged by the sending the Sputnik like Sputnik and other satellites to the space. Advances in military technology constantly change the existing political balances. So in the meantime because of the engineers and technology, the military technology was tremendously developed during the past few decades and therefore the political balances are challenging. In addition, many engineering and organizations, private companies, as well as societies such as the American Society of Civil Engineering and World Federation of Engineering Organizations are working instantaneously. You understand that those are the value of the engineers in the <coughs> world. The synergy of engineering and sciences, businesses, finances and political has changed the world. So, you have to understand. Then, even though engineering is an indispensable element of the, the synergy, it is rarely considered an instrument of foreign policy and international relations. In, the, in this context, it is sobering to review some of the challenges facing engineering and this NAE engineering and any national administrative authorities beginning with the necessity of keeping track of technology engineering development throughout the world as no action has monopoly on creativity interventions interventions and technological skills so therefore engineering has tremendously changed the world with the engineering development. Even the road, civil section, even the aeroplanes and mechanical, even the telecommunication and everything change the day-to-day -day life of the world. The establishment of the dialogues with engineers and scientists from countries that are critical to the stability of the world, regardless of the regardless of political climate what might are called scientific and engineering diplomacy, present and even bigger challenges. So, example including the Pugwish conferences that maintain contact between American and Russian engineers and scientists during the Cold War, recent meeting between American and Iranian engineers and scientists. So, that such way that internationally people are connecting with the sciences. For more also remains to be done to address the related challenges to world sustainability such as global warming, increase in carbon dioxide emissions, the predicted rise in sea level, overfishing, overconsumption and disappearance of species right so those are the challenges regarding the sustainability in the main sustainability will require not only working defensively but also creating imaginative new project the like environmentally begin being infrastructure system in homes and cars and water efficient desert agriculture that is sustainability will require only working in defensively but also creating imaginative new project like environmentally meaning infrastructure system homes and cars and water efficient desert agriculture so water efficient cars means you know electrical cars and everything and in fact system is a very friendly environmental friendly houses and efficient desert agriculture so you know with the minimum amount of water this 
desert are cultivating the various foods human beings need. Sustainability and combating poverty are the foundation of this stable civil society. And they require the crossing of boundaries and the pooling of crucial human resources, particularly engineers. So actually for sustainability, it is mainly focused to combating the poverty and poverty of the civil society. Therefore, engineers are playing <coughs> very crucial role in this regard. Although engineering is only one instrument for addressing global challenges and international relations, it is crucial one. So, engineering one instrument addressing global changes and in international relations, it is a crucial one. The engineering community must participate actively in policy discussion and planning and may even sometimes provide a technological fix that cut through the unresolvable uh, social and political impasses. So, this in, 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 the, in this regard, international relations, the engineering community is actually making more participatory action in the action uh, policy activity in the policy we discussed, but normally they are um, in the first and world engineers are mostly involved with the policy decisions and policy making and in the you know china there are a number of engineers uh, number of ministers are engineers like that engineers are prominent everywhere So now <coughs> we will discuss about the international relations and globalization, very most popular subject. As more nations, peoples and cultures adopt to their ever changing international community, diplomats, politicians and representatives must meet and deal with the accordingly to needs and wants, wants of nations. Diplomacy can be exerted, exerted in many forms through the peace talks, written, constitution and field experience. Field experience. Globalization increase worldwide technology and readability of past. Effective effective communication and consumption of popular products. International relations focus on how countries, people and organizations are in tracks and globalization is the making profound effect on international relations. Globalization, the process of continuing integration of the countries, the world is strongly underway in all parts of the globe. It is complex interconnections between the capitalism and democracy and which involves positive and negative features that both empowers and disempowers individual and groups. So then that is the one society. The world is all the countries are whether it is capital government or democracy, all are members of the globalization and then treated as an equal people. Globalization increased the worldwide technology and credibility in past effectively communication and consumption of popular product. Globalization links culture and international relations on a variety of levels, economics, politically and socially, etc. International relations have used globalization to reach its goal of understanding the cultures. International relations focus on how countries, people and organizations interact and globalization is making a profound effect on international relations. 
understanding culture and globalization and international relation is critical for the future of, of not only government, people and businessmen but for the survival of the human race. In today, increasingly interdependent and turbulent world, right, interdependent and turbulent world, many of the leading issues in the news concern international affairs whether it is continuing impact of globalization. Globalization, the process of continuing integration of the countries in the world is strongly underway in all parts of the globe. It is a complex interconnection between the capitalism as well as democracy which involves positive and negative features that both empowers and this empowers individual and groups. Further, from the other hand, globalization is a popular term used by the government, business people, academics, and range of diverse non-governmental organizations. It also, however, signifies a new paradigm within world politics and economic relations. Why? National government for many, mainly years dictated the international political and economic scene. International organizations such as World Bank, International Monetary Fund and World Trade Organization WTO are now become now become significant role players. In this global village, national government have lost some of their importance and package their powers in favor of these major international organizations. As a process of international and integration among people, interactions and as a process of interaction and integration among people, companies and government of different nations, globalization is a process driven by the international trade and investment and aided by information technology. This process on the environment, on culture, on political system, on economic development and prosperity and on human physical well-being in societies around the world. So, in the meantime, there is a advantages as well as disadvantages of globalization. Globalization has a range of advantages, while it has also disadvantages. The advantages include GDP increase, loss development increase, statistics shows that GDP in developing countries has increased twice as much as before. Unemployment is reduced. That is the fund of the benefit. And that day, education has increased. Competition on even platform. The companies all around the world are competing on a single global platform, which allow better options for consumers. It increased free trade between nations. The cooperation have greater flexibility to operate across borders. Global mass media ties the world today together. English flow of communication allow vital information to be shared between the individuals and the cooperation around the world. In increasing environmental protection in development, developed nations, the spread of democratic ideas to develop nations, reduce cultural barriers, increase in the global village effect. That is the benefit of the advantages of the globalization. The disadvantages are considered to be uneven distribution of wealth, income gap between the developed and developing 
countries, where the wealth of developed countries continue to grow twice as much as the developing world. Next disadvantage is different wage of standard for developing countries, which is explained by the following fact that a technology worker may get more value for his work in a developed country than a worker in the developing country. Thus, there are in the latter data many dynamic institutions and enterprising people are, who are well educated and ready to work with trigger. To reveal of globalization is also considered as a disadvantage which is explaining by future factors such as war and can be demand the reveal of the globalization and current process of globalization may just be impossible to reverse. There is also another aspect of disadvantage of globalization in media sphere the threat that control of world media by handful or cooperation will limit cultural expression. And the final in, in my estimation is that chances of reaction for globalization being violent in the in attempt to present cultural heritage. Then, in this, for the engineering concern, that role of United Nations for development is a crucial. Now, the United Nations is the most powerful organization, as most of the representative intergovernment organization of the world today, the United Nations role is world affairs is irreplaceable by any other international law regional organization. The United Nations has made enormous positive contributions in maintaining international peace and security, promoting cooperation among status and international development. Today, people of the world still face the two major issues of peace and development. Only by international cooperation can mankind meet the challenges of the global and regional issues. The United Nations can play a pivotal role and positive role in regard. Strengthening the role of United Nations in the new century and, and promoting the establishment of just a reasonable international political and economic order goes along with the trend of history and is in the interest of all nations. In order to extend the role of United Nations, effort should be made to uphold the purpose, of, purpose and principle of the Charter of the United Nations. The authority of the Security Council is maintaining international peace and security must be preserved and the role of the United Nations in developing area should be strength. The strength or role of the United Nations, it is essential to ensure to all member states of the United Nations the rights to equal participation in international affairs and the right and interest of the United developing countries should be safeguarded. So, the global development system is in flux. Because Western donors like G7 countries and European Union have committed to a major expansion of their transfers to poor countries and poor countries and determine the enhanced aid effectiveness within the framework of Paris Declaration, emerging powers 
like China, India and Brazil are significantly intensifying their outreach toward developing countries but prefer to remain outside the harmonization process initiated by the OECD Development Cooperation Committee DAC, and non-state actors such as foundations and international non-government organizations and NGOs are also gaining an influence and can command, command increasing resources. At the stage, however, it remains unclear how the United Nations will want to position itself in the international development architecture. Again, against the backdrop of the rapidly changing international environment, the pay, this ana people analyzing the position of the United Nations system within the global development architecture. In particularly, the people are discussed the opportunity and constraints of current reform effort enhancing on enhancing the UN system, wide coherence and empowering the economic and social council as a global convener on development issues. A special attention will be focused in converging and diverging positions of industrial countries and the alliance of the developing countries at the UN and G77 China since any progress critically depend on consensus building among member states. Finally, it is it outlines the practical steps which reform minded status from North and South could take to boost the UN position in the global development system. The UN development system consists of funds, programs and specialized agencies. UN funds and programs are directly under the authority of general assembly and the secretary general and are all entirely funded to the voluntary contribution by UN member status. They have been changed, charged with operational activities at country level. That means policy advisory functions, consultancy for government and project implementation. The specialized agencies such as UNDP, United Nations Development Programs, United Nations Euro Environmental Program, United Nations Population Fund, United Nations Children's Sand Fund, and World Food Program. All those are special agencies of so specialized agencies such as World Bank, ADB, are contractually not not to the UN and do not receive binding defective from the General Assembly of the Secretary General. They have their own membership, their own governing situation and collected assess, assess mandatory contribution from the member states with regard to the core functions. The specialized agencies have the mandate for global norm. So, in this regard, this actually now the United Nations, their role is now tracked by the some other agencies also. Besides the funds program, specialist agency deal with development, in general perception, the UN is regarded as an impartial actor in humanitarian because you know Human Rights Commission and all those things are very important. In the in, in this that new colonialism also one of the subject we have to discuss. Uh, new colonialism this actually the control of less developed countries by developed countries through the indirect means. The term new colonization is earlier colonization means that even Sri Lanka also Portuguese, Dutch and British invade the country and they establish the colonization. So now neo colonization means, means the first after World War II to refer to the continuing dependence former colonies 
one foreign countries. But its meaning soon would burden to apply more generally to place where the power of developed countries was used to produce the colonial like exploitation. For instance, in Latin America, where direct foreign rule had ended in the early 19th century. The term is now an, an now negative one that is widely used for refer to the form of global power in which transitional cooperation and global and multilateral institution combine to triplicate colonial forms of exploitation of European countries. Neocolonization has been broadly understood as a further development of capitalism that enables capitalist power, both nations and corporations, to dominate subject nations through the operations and international capitalism rather than by means of direct rules. The term neocolonization was originally applied to the European policies that were seen as a schemes to maintain and control African and other defenses. The event that marked the beginning of this usage was meeting of European force for government in Paris, 1957, where six European leaders agreed to include their overseas territories within the European common market under the trade document that were seen by some national leaders and group as representing a new form of economic domination over French occupied Africa and the colonial Paris, Italy, Belgium and Netherlands. The agreement reached the Paris was codified Treaty of Rome, which get the which get the established European economic community. So that new colonialism came to seen more generally as involving coordination effort to form colonial powers and other developed countries to block growth of developing countries and retain them as a source of cheap raw material and cheap labor. This effort was seen is closely associated with the Cold War and in particular while the US policy known as the Truman Doctrine, under the policy of US government offered large amount of money to any government prepared to accept US protection from the commun communism. This enabled the United States to extend the sphere of influence and in some cases the place foreign government under the control. The United States and other developed countries also ensured that subordination of developing countries, critics argue, by in interfering in conflicts and helping in other ways So, more broadly, neo-colonial government is seen as operating through the indirect forms of control and in particular by means of the economic, financial and trade policies of transitional cooperation and global multinational institutions. So, most of the way, the engineers are involved because all the, these activities are related with the development. So therefore, this is now in the various forms it was inter coming to the country by once you come to the globalization, right? It is also another phenomena that used in the various these things. Globalization means that speed up, speed up movement and exchange of human beings, goods and services, capital, technologies of cultural practices all over the planet, which promote an increased interaction between different regions and population around the globe. The internet relations and globalization is a very important as more nations, people and culture adapt to the ever-changing international community. Diplomats, 
politicians and representatives must meet and deal with accordingly to the needs and wants of nations. Diplomacy can be exerted in many forms through the peace talks, written constitutions, field experience, etc. Culture and familiar term and remains unchanged by definition. However, globalization and international basis have constantly altered culture both positively and negatively. A globalization increase worldwide technology and the readability of the fast, effective communication and consumption of popular product. Globalization brings culture and international relations on a variety of levels, economic, political and social, etc. So engineers are played major role. International relations have used globalization to reach its global of understanding culture. International relations focus on how countries, people and organizations interact and globalization is making a profound effect on international relations. Understanding the culture and globalization and international relations is critical for future of not only government, people and businessmen but the survival of the human race. In today, increasingly independent and turbulent world, many of the leading issues in the news concern international affairs, whether it is the continuing impact of globalization. Globalization, the process of continuing integration of the countries in the world, is strongly underway in all parts of the globe. It is a complex interconnection between the capitalism and democracy, which involve positive and negative features that both empowers and disempowers the individual and groups. From the other hand, globalization is a particular term used by the government, businessmen, academics, and a range of diverse non government organizations. It also, however, signifies the new paradigm within world politics and economic relation. While national government for many years dictated the international, political and economic scene, international organizations such as World Bank, IMF and World Trade Organization have now become a significant role plays in the players. In this global vigil, national government have lost some of their importance and perhaps their powers in favor of these major international organizations. As a process of interaction and integration among people, companies and government of different nations, globalization is a process driven by the international trade and investment and aided by the information technology. This process on the environment, on culture, on political system, on economic development and prosperity, and on human physical well-being in societies around the world. So, globalization of Indian profession will lead to greater access to the world market, competition, and the free flow of goods, services, capital, and knowledge. So, in the meantime, I think. As an engineer, we must know the IESL as a member of the International Alliance of Education Accord, that is Washington Accord, and Sydney Accord, and Dublin Accord. IESL is a member of International Engineering Alliance Education Accord, Washington Accord, Sydney Accord, as a Dublin Accord. The above three multilateral agreements between groups of jurisdictional agencies responsible for accreditation of recognition of the tertiary level engineering qualification within the jurisdiction who have chosen to work effect collectively to assist the mobility of engineering practitioners, professional engineers, engineering technologists and engineering technicians holding suitable qualifications. So then actually this is a very good agreement 
any because any anybody who are members of the accreditation Washington Echo accredited at their university, then they can work in the other part of the world without the another getting the qualification. Because of the I can remember that somewhere in 2016 when the engineering degrees of the British they are trying to reduce the duration four years to three years. So then the Malaysia meeting that all the countries are discussed and they said no we must have the four years engineering degree because the British is trying to actually their education is marketing therefore within three years if they can produce the engineer they can learn little more therefore they are trying to reduce the period from four years to three years actually they started in the four years now they are sized in three years so all the member countries were not according not favor of that they said no we must not change because of the uh, all the countries all the engineering this degrees are four year degrees in the meantime i do i can remember uh, russia they said that because they they don't have i think some requirement for advanced level c subject to enter the university or something like that so therefore they were actually trying to change their regulations and everything to fit the washington echo like that even in the global leaders the all the education is come to the one platform and then everybody equal therefore isl also actually in the addition in sri lanka all the university degrees are first instance recognition then the accreditation so recognition is valid to practice in sri lanka and then the accreditation and washington is good valid to practice in the all countries so that we also in the globalization member of the international alliance of it so then it can uh, what i want to just to share with some thought of direct foreign direct investment actually what is the foreign direct investment so nowadays we are always uh, discuss, uh, we are seeing and hearing from the news foreign direct investment a foreign direct investment is a purchase of interest in a company by a company of company who an invest located outside the borders so very clear so in sri lanka for example our company interest is going to locate going to control by the investor located outside the borders like china or us yeah. united states or india someday generally the term is used to describe the business decisions to acquire substantial stake in a foreign business or by its outright in order to expand its operation to a new region it is not usually used to describe by stock investment in a foreign company foreign direct investment a substantial investment made by the company into the foreign concern the investment may involve acquiring the source of material expanding the company footprint or developing the multinational presence because sometimes most mostly the developed countries they have material and resources to use that they are coming with the money to exploit the, our resources in according to the figures that as in 2020 the us is the second into china in attract in the foreign direct investment how foreign direct investment for companies considering foreign direct investment generally took only at companies in open economics that offer a skilled workforce and above average growth prospects for the investor right government regulation also tend to price foreign direct investment frequently goes beyond the capital investment it may include the provisional provisions of management technology and equipment as well because they brought all those things to the, our country 
any features of foreign direct investments that establish the effective control of foreign business or at least substantial influence over the decision making in 2020 foreign direct investment tank globally due to covid-19 when when is according to the united nations conference on trade and development the total dollars 850 billion global investment companies with dollars 1.5 trillion to previous year and china this launch the us us in 2020 as a top draw for fund investor attracting dollars 160 billion compared to the investment in the united states they they spent 134 billion so like that <coughs> now it is foreign direct investment coming in other form to exploit the our resources and even sometimes they are trying to get the part of the lands and other these things so i think you are, you are reading in the papers near these days what is happening in around the our country also foreign direct investment can be made in variety of ways including opinion of subsidiary or associate company in foreign country acquiring a controlling interest in an existing foreign company or by means of major merger of joint venture with foreign company the threshold for a foreign direct investment that establish a controlling interest for guidelines established by the organization of economic cooperation and development oecd is a minimum 10% ownership stake in a foreign based company that definition is flexible there are instances which effects to control in interest in the firm can be established by acquiring less than 10% of company voting shares so those are but type of foreign indirect investment are foreign direct investment commonly categorized as horizontal vertical and conglomerate with the horizontal direct investment a company establish the same type of business operation in a foreign country as it operate in its home country a us based cell phone provider by a chain of phone stores in china is an example then in the vertical investment a business acquiring a complementary business in another country for example a us manufacturer might acquire an interest in a foreign company that applies it with raw material it needs in the conglomerate type of foreign direct investment a company invests in a foreign business that is unrelated to its core business since the investment company has no prior experience in the foreign company's area of expertise this often takes the form of joint venture so a foreign direct investment may involve mergers acquisition and partnership in retail service logistics or manufacturing they indicate the multinational strategy to company growth they they also can turn into cut regulatory sanction us companies united states companies so navidia has announced its acquisition of the arm a uk based chip designer in august 2010 uk's competition what dog had announced an investment into whether dollars 40 billion deal around reduce competition in reduction industries reliant to semiconductor chips in the meantime foreign direct investment in china and india china economy has been fueled by the influx of foreign direct investment targeting the nation's high tech manufacture and services meanwhile the relax foreign direct investment regulation in india now allow 100% foreign direct investment in single brand retail without government approval this regulatory decision reported the facilitate a best desire to open a physical store in the indian market thus for the firms iphone and only being available to third party physical and online uh, retail 
So now it is actually foreign direct investment is now going beyond their objectives. Actually, the foreign direct investment is a long term and non debit creating financial flow from one country to another that helps to increase the aggregate investment of a country. Unlike other capital flows, foreign direct investment embodies many desirable features such as transfer of technology and development of human capital through transferring managerial and marketing skills, etc. Further, foreign direct investment helps facilitate global integration, infrastructure development and technological innovation while creating employment opportunities and new market. On this favorable effect, foreign direct investment Sri Lanka has introduced various policy measures to attract more foreign development investment into the country since 1977. So now we have our objectives are very clear but actually what is happening in present era is quite different from the our objectives. That's the type. So engineers are engineering communities much affected now present foreign direct investment because most of the investors are bringing their material from the other countries and labor, machineries, ma managers, marketing, everything from the, their country. So we are not getting nothing. So that's what I want just to mention. So, but in Sri Lanka, infrastructure facilities for attracting foreign direct investment, they are only by good quality, fiscal and social infrastructure at the competitive prices, infrastructure facilities, power, road, telecom, etc. Trade policy. In Sri Lanka, foreign direct attraction has been below the expectation nowadays. Therefore, it is time to create more friendly investment climate offering attractive investors. That's all I have mentioned because this is a very difficult area. But uh, as engineers, I think we must have some sort of idea about this. That's it. Thank you very much.